In this section, we're going to talk about some simple queries. Now, these may be something that you already have advanced knowledge of, but we'll actually talk about why they're important within Impala. And for other people, this may be a review of your previous SQL skills. So let's start going through them. So here we have our simple select. So we select asterisk from cards. If we want to select specific columns out of that, we can do select card suit from cards. One of the issues with Impala is that we need to think about it in terms of big data. And this is very important. If you run this select on a table with a billion rows or a hundred billion rows, guess what? It's going to select back a hundred billion rows and it's going to happily do that. What we don't want to do is do a select star and just bring back every single piece of data. So what we'll often want to do is use the where clause. The where clause allows us to specify what sort of data we want back. So we could do a select star from cards where the suit of spades. So if we had a table where we were storing card data and there were different types of suits, there were four suits, and we only wanted spades back, we could say where suit equals spades, and that's only going to give that back. Or we could run what's called a like. So we could do where card like one. What that's going to do is any number there with a card that starts with one is going to be returned. So one and 10 will both be returned. Another thing we could do is mix two different parts of the where clause, where we could say where the suit is spades and the card number is one. That's going to only give us back where suits and cards are one. Another possibility is that we have our cards where we can check and see where they're null. And to do that, we do where card is null. Another common thing that we'll want to do is limiting queries. As I said during the select, what we don't want to do is have a wide open query. What we'll often want to do is, if we want to take a peek at some data, we'll want to limit that. And we don't want to bring all the results back. We'll just want to bring some number back, maybe as a sanity check, or maybe for the purposes of pagination. To do that, we do a select star from the table name cards, and we're going to limit that. In this case, we can limit that to just 10 rows. So in this case, 10 or fewer rows would come back. So if there were fewer than 10 rows, it would just return those number of rows. We can also combine that with a where clause, which is very common, where we'll want to see, let me see 10 spades, and you can bring those back using the select clause of where suit equals spade, limit 10. We also have to define our table. So what we have to do is, in a very simple sense, if we can accept all the defaults and use all the defaults, we'll just need to define the tables, columns, and types. And behind the scenes, Impala will automatically create some things for us. It's going to automatically create a directory in HDFS with that table's name. By default, that path is user, hive, warehouse, and then the table name. In this case, the table name card simple would be placed in user, hive, warehouse, card simple. Now let's review the actual syntax for that. We do a create table and then the table name. In this case, the table name is card simple. And then we start to define the actual types and columns within it. So we use parentheses, card, string, suit, string. If we forget, oftentimes it's helpful to review what the makeup of a table is. What we can use is the describe command to remember what exactly was in that table. In this case, we're here at the Impala shell and we type in describe space cards. What that's going to do is it's going to output the type and the name and any comments that makes up that table. In this case, we just created a table called cards. And in card, there is a type of string and then there's a suit of string. Now you may be wondering what sorts of types Impala actually supports. So let's go through those. First off, we have a tiny int, which is a signed byte. Then we have a small int, which is a 16-bit short. Then we have an int, that's a 32-bit integer. A big int is a 64-bit integer or long. We have Boolean type. We have a float, which is a four byte. Then we have a double, which is an eight byte precision. Following that, we have real, which is an alias for double, the type that we just discussed. Then we have string, and that's a string literal. Then we have our binary timestamp, and that's a Unix timestamp, and that supports time since epic, as well as the format year, month, day, hour, minute, seconds, femtoseconds. Then we have decimal, 
Decimal is an implementation of Java's big decimal class. And then we have varchar. And this is a string with a variable number of characters. We have up to 65K or so in order to put that in. And then we have our character. That's a fixed link string. We also have support for complex types within Impala. For example, Impala supports the array type. However, the data type within that array has to be specified. We also have the map type, and that's a type that's made up of keys and values. And we're going to have to specify the data types for both the key and the value. We also have support for structs. So what we'll have to do is define all the types within that struct for the data types and the names within them. In a previous slide, we talked about the easiest way to create a table. However, it's very often that we'll have to change that. So the data for a table, once again, that's stored as files in a directory. And it's up to us to define what that format is. So here we are back at our create table syntax. So we do create table cards, then we have our card and our suit. But now we're starting to define what the contents of that file looks like. In this case, we say row format delimited. What we're saying is there is a row, and then we're delimiting that character. Then we have to specify what that character that delimits or splits up the columns, and that's fields terminated by tab character. In this case, we're looking at a tab separated file or TSV format. If we were to use a comma separated format, instead of a tab character there, we would do just a comma, and then it would be a comma separated file format. As you saw in a previous slide, we talked about where files are located and directories are located for tables. By default, that's in user hive warehouse. However, we may want to have files that exist outside of that. Maybe we already have those files in HDFS, or maybe we just don't want to do that. Well, there's another reason for locating those outside of user hive warehouse. These tables are called external tables. And one of the things that an external table gives you is, in addition to being outside of user hive warehouse, is that the table's data isn't deleted during a table drop. And this is quite helpful. It adds an extra layer of security or having to have somebody manually delete those files in order to not lose data. So in general, the use of external tables is highly recommended because it gives that extra level of undoability. In order to create an external table, what we do is create external table, and then we give the table name, then we give all the columns and names and types there, then we specify the location. And once again, that location is in HDFS. So this location is user, VM user, cards. And notice that is USER. In HDFS, they don't use home or user, they do USER, and that's where the user's home directories are. Next, we'll want to load data into Impala. What we can do is we can add files with a SQL command. We can do individual inserts. They are supported, but updates aren't supported. That said, I highly, highly, highly recommend against using individual inserts. Those are generally for inserting just from some test data or something. You'll generally want to use things in terms of files. So here's the command in order to add new files. What we do is we do load data in path, and then the path in HDFS where that exists. In this case, the file exists in user, VM user, playing cards.tsv into table, and then the table name cards. What that's going to do is it's going to copy that file from that path in HDFS into where the table exists, and it's going to expect that there. But it's not going to erase any previous data. If there's already data or files in there, it will just add to that. However, we can change that by doing an overwrite. What an overwrite does is it will remove any data that's already there and just add that data that we're doing the load data in. So there we have the ellipsis dot dot. So what we do is load data in path, user, VM user, playing cards dot TSV, overwrite into table cards. Once again, that will overwrite any previous data and just the playing cards will exist there. And now here's an exercise. In this exercise, I'm going to challenge you to run some simple queries using both the Impala shell and Hue if you desire. This is gonna take about 30 minutes to do. So once again, please do the exercise. 